Okay, welcome everybody to Barco's Digital Canvas Part 2. I am your host, Gustavo, with Pure Audio Video. And we are joined today by Tim Sinevi from Head of Barco Residential and Rob Anders, who is the founder of NEO. So Rob, let's get started for people who don't know. What is NEO? Can you talk a little bit about what the platform is and why you got started? Yeah, so, you know, thanks for, thanks for inviting us on today. Um, you know, it's funny because um, the way that we would need to present ourselves pre-COVID and pre-pre this phrase NFT that a lot of people that might be watching have heard since the beginning of this year, we would have to, you know, start from educating people from 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 a very different place to today. Neo is probably today the world's leading platform for digital art, which essentially means we are a platform which brings together on the one side the largest community of high-quality digital artists, currently over six and a half thousand artists from eighty-two countries, and these are artists who specialize in creating digital artwork, ultimately artwork created digitally to be experienced digitally, usually screen-based or projector-based, and thus the relationship with Barco. And through our platform, this community is able to showcase their works to the broadest possible audience and make it very easy for consumers on the other side to discover and then experience the very highest quality digital art um, on their screens at home. Um, or beyond according to different business models. So whether they want to subscribe in a kind of Spotify type model, which gives people access and an introduction to this space, or whether people actually want to loan or purchase limited edition, high quality artworks. Um, and of course, you know, now in the world of NFTs, um, that's, that's very much hand in hand with, with what we have to offer. The company was founded a few years ago. Um, we are so we're very fortunate to be supported by on the one side, some of the leading venture capitalists in this world who, who come from a background in scaling very large media content related businesses, but also some of the most influential people in the art world, board members of the Guggenheim and the MoMA, largest collectors in Asia. And so we've been very fortunate to bring together a, a group of people who think that in the world we live in today, as we're going through, you know, I guess the fourth industrial revolution and digital transformation, and we're living our lives pinned in front of screens and our, everywhere we go, advertising and information is trying to bombard us. We feel that it's important for people to have a, an opportunity for that meaningful moment, a moment to stop, to reflect. And in some ways, that what, that's what art does. Art is obviously a space which is highly, highly adored by, by some and, and almost you know, scary for others because you know, it was almost somewhat exclusive. So for us, we see the digital art medium as the medium that A, can reach the broadest audience. It's the medium which is most relevant for today's world. And we believe it's the one which can be most accessible whereby partnering with people like Barco, we're able to enable people to really have a seamless experience similar to how you can now experience music or other content sectors. So that's Neo in a, in a nutshell. Um, and it's a very exciting time to be in this space because clearly the, the market is, is really blowing up right now. Absolutely. So that, to me, what I'm hearing from you is you saw the void in the market because you wanted to, because of this digital transition, because we're living in an age of software, and digital experiences, you said there's a tremendous opportunity here to expand how people experience art, to make art more accessible for more people, and to still mm -hmm. not sacrifice quality for the for the art collectors, for the people who want to experience, you know, museum quality art in their homes. Is that correct? Yeah, that, absolutely. I think that. Um... Yeah, first of all, my, myself and my co-founder, a guy called Oren Moshe, um, you know, have been in building, building out large, scalable, high-tech companies over the last 20 years. And you know, when you get a little bit older and a little bit grayer and you have kids, you, you look for businesses which, which actually have impact as well as just revenue driving. And anyway, I think that's how you get the best people, the best teams. And so, yes, there was definitely a strong purpose to try and reach the broadest possible audience. For many years already, there's, it's become almost cliche, the notion of art for the masses. Um, and like other content sectors, it all started with people being able to go online and buy a painting that is then shipped and delivered a physical painting to your home. You know, we're, we, we come from a background of really using the cutting edge of technology. And we were also, we were looking at the very beginning of this journey. We went and spoke with around about 200 artists, galleries, collectors, institutions, established artists, emerging artists. And it was very clear that this is a medium which ref reflects the world today. You know, artists will always talk about the world they live in and artists would always use whatever tools they have to create and there's more accessibility now and in the last few years to creating digital than ever before it used to be thousands of dollars to, to have a 4k camera you can now shoot it on your mobile phone so i think the combination of that the combination of the trends towards digital consumption 
you know, the war, the, the trends towards society being comfortable to buy and subscribe to experience content, not just necessarily only having to own things. The transition towards more and more higher quality displays, you know, whether it was you know monitors or whether it's it's high high, high quality projection. You know, all of these trends came together, and then obviously during COVID, people are locked down. Everyone's scrambling, and and, and sectors which were always going to sort of actually, you know, it's like a rocket. A rocket has gone up, um, and then you bring into the mix a hundred thousand people in the last twelve months who've become millionaires through, you know, the crypto explosions. Um, and you know, art has always actually been to some people and to some extent it's an asset class. Now, true art collectors will buy this as as custodians of culture, but for others, it's speculation, it's investment, and and for other people who have money, you know, it's the ability to bring something beautiful into their beautiful homes. You know, if they're bringing high quality Barco LEDs and projectors, then it shouldn't just be for the purpose of when you're sitting down and watching a film or a ball game, but, you know, it could be an experience rather than a black screen. So, you know, it was it was a lot of factors together and we're fortunate to have a great team who have been involved in building large companies. And and I think, you know, the timing and the stars have lined up. And, and so right now really is, 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 is a very exciting time. That's interesting. I like that answer a lot. I'm curious to hear from Tim, when you first came across Neo, you know, as the head of Barco Residential, what got you excited about it? What opportunities did you see in that potential partnership? Well, I mean, the first thing, of course, is that, you know, I always had a personal interest in, in art, so that, that obviously helps. Um, and as we started building Barco Residential, it was quickly clear for us that there were a lot more opportunities than just home theater, which is what people tend to think of uh, at first. So we had already started thinking in that direction, thinking from the perspective of, you know, what can we do with what is essentially digital canvases that we can create. Uh, and so when I first met Rob a couple of years ago, it, it kind of just clicked, right? We had been thinking on that side, Rob was building something that was uh, required because obviously a digital canvas without the the experience to to create on it doesn't work. So uh, from my perspective, it was all quite natural, uh, and we started collaborating, exposing people to to what this is and what this could be because it obviously takes takes a bit of time also for people to 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 get accustomed with what we are talking about. Um, and I also started uh, realizing a lot of other things around it. You know, if you looked at our industry as a whole. It came together with the realization that I thought, you know, we're only reaching a small part of our potential, uh, you know, thinking that the architecture uh, and design community was the key to unlocking that full potential. Then the fact that architects and designers tend to be far more familiar uh, and have a lot more natural affinity with art than they do with home theater, for example, it all kind of fell into place. So from my perspective, it was a little bit like uh, seeing a number of dots in the market that, that absolutely should be connected, but couldn't necessarily see each other. So, you know, through Rob, I, I, I met some gallery owners, spoke to those people as well, spoke to artists, and it just all kind of seemed to seem to fit together. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's really, it, it's it, it's a new art form as well, right? I sometimes say, you know, when when you look at it, when when oil painting was invented or, or water paint was invented, it, it led artists to create in new and different ways, and that's the way we should look at technology as well. Uh, where too often we just look at technology as a product or a screen or whatever it might be. Um, this is also why it was important to me, or I quickly realized that something that really excited me was being able to liberate digital artists in a way from the 16 by nine aspect ratio straight jacket, if you will. You know, it was almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why is most art or digital art, why is it available in, in 16 by nine? Well, because that's what we have to show it on, right? And so if, if you're not careful, that kind of becomes a limitation that people just accept. Um, and while, of course, it is important to be able to use all the existing canvases and bring that new experience, it's also very exciting to be able to say to an artist, hey, by the way, when you create your vision, you don't have to be limited by that, right? You can create whatever you want in the same way that a painter doesn't really have any limitations in the shape of the work that he wants to create or the size of the work that he wants to create. So I saw that as something exciting for us as a technology provider to actually make a contribution to to the artistic creative process as well by creating new tools and, and new opportunities and 
Uh, of course, a lot of that I initially kind of thought of myself. So probably one of the scariest things I, I, I did in the past couple of years was present my my digital art presentation that I had done for integrators to, to show them what this was and, and where I think uh, they could play a role was was doing that presentation for uh, one of the leading digital artists in the world right now because I was making a lot of assumptions on what this meant to them. Uh, and so it was it was very exciting to see that it really connected with how they felt about it as well and how all these different aspects of technology can become important in the artistic uh, creative process as well. Even when you look at things like, you know, we've talked about projection, there's, there's direct view LED and things like that as well. As, as we got deeper into it, it was also exciting for me to kind of discover how specific um, aspects of different technologies actually created different opportunities. One, one example is when you look at uh, direct view LED and the different resolutions and dot pitches in direct view LED, that actually translates into texture, right? And texture, uh, obviously, is an artistic medium. So it was really interesting to introduce even some artists to that and, and them going, actually, you know, this is not even how I expected it. You know, people always tend to think the higher the resolution, the better. Uh, but that's not necessarily true when you look at art. So when I saw one of these artists come to our headquarters and you know experiment with different artworks on different technologies, it was really interesting to see him go, you know, actually, I'm not going to go for the highest resolution. I'm going to go for that dot pitch because that gives me the texture that I'm looking for. So there's so many elements of technology that become relevant in the in, in the artistic creation process, if that makes sense. It does. And I think it's also interesting to point out, like in your background, Tim, it's a static piece of artwork. But if you go on Neo's website, a lot of what's highlighted is moving art. So, you know, I'm the question is for both of you, but uh, Rob, why do you think there's been such an emphasis um, on moving art? Is it because because it's digital, we can take advantage of the artists can recreate things and differentiate from the analog world or is there uh do you see this like in other words as an experimentation period or do you see this as something that's gonna gonna sustain this this moving this idea of moving art versus a more static image so so first of all you know if we look back since the 1960s video art which is essentially you know moving image um has you know it's been it's been there since the 1960s every major private and public collection has video art or other forms of digital art moving moving digital art um you know it enables the artist to have to, to i guess um have a have a broader narrative in their artwork um, remember everything when it comes to art is first and foremost about the artist wanting to tell a story and they'll use technology um to tell that story, and they're led with it. They're led by their artistic concepts and their artistic direction beyond the technology. So yes, they like to be able to create in different ways. Um, and of course, once you move on to a screen, you're not limited in terms of uh, in terms of moving image, uh, in terms of static. You know, as uh, yes, Tim's showing some other ones right now, and 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 not just is it are, are these moving image works, but also they become intelligent. So if you look at and you think about the evolution of uh, of, of, of visual. You go from something black and white text to something black and white, which is, uh, you know, has a, a rec vectors and resolution to something which is moving from an animated GIF through to up to your know, 4K, 8K video, you know, and, and beyond that, you go into interactive code based artworks where essentially the software, the software, the, the artist will use um, either existing or customized software to create real time um, moving image. So um, it's actually a living, breathing artwork. So of course, the moment the canvas is a screen which can itself present um, something living, then artists will, no surprise, take advantage of that. But again, it's been there since the 1960s and 70s. Video art is definitely, you know, a, a uh, you know a, a medium which is, has been on the map. Um, and going forward, it's you know, it's it's now having its moment. If you think photography came only you know 30, 40 years ago um, as a, as an accepted medium, very much this this medium is now there. Interesting. And so from a technology standpoint, Tim, when you're looking at different types of moving art and, and animated animated pieces, is there a certain technology, say if an artist wanted to say, I want to create 
you know, a five piece collection, right? And it's going to have this kind of animation quality. Do you help select the best technology for that? Is it direct view LED? Is it projection? Does that get factored into the, the artistic process ahead of time? I guess that, that's a question for both of you. Uh, absolutely. Um, but of course, it, it's also developing, right? I mean, you look at, like, like Rob says, this is this is not new, right? There's, there's artists um, that, that have been doing this for many years. And, and quite frankly, some of these artists have a, have a knowledge of, of technology that is absolutely staggering, right? So they have been using really uh, innovative, not only innovative technologies, but very inno innovative ways of, of using technologies. Uh, but it has been primarily in really large scale public um, exhibitions, um, you know, where, where they, they were doing things with buildings, for example. I, I remember something where I, I believe it was in London, Rob, Rob might remember it better than I do, but where someone was projecting like on, onto the tile so that it looked like people were actually underneath the, the square where this was, was taking place. So, you know, some of these artists have, have amazing, uh, amazing prowess in technology. But of course, what that then means is that it's usually only available to, to a level of artist and to a level of project um, that really has gigantic budgets. So, you know, when, when you come into the home, for example, um, then I think that's that's where we can make a, a bigger difference by not only bringing this to more artists, but also making this available to more homes. But it's absolutely part of the creative process and, and should be part of the creative process in, in the sense that uh, an artist should really be able to, to look at that and say, okay, this is what I'm trying to create. How do I use this? And, and I really see that that as a as a contribution that we can make as well. So, you know, I've, I've been meaning to to work on a on a white paper, for example, with with a number of these artists and also together with Neo to to dive deeper into the specific aspects of direct view LED, for example. You know, wh where are its specific uh, differences with projection? What situation uh, can you use this in? And, and then, of course, there's also the architectural aspects of it, right? Uh, what's the situation? How are you using the space that can also change it. Uh, if you look at the earlier image that I had uh, that I had in my background, uh, this is in fact was also moving. It's just because it's a static background that, that you don't see it moving. But in this case, for example, doing it with direct ULED would have been Im impossible. You know, never mind the, the practical aspects uh, and, and, and the structural aspects. But with direct ULED, for example, uh, when the artwork was not on, you would have just had a giant black hole as the centerpiece of your home, which, of course, from an architectural perspective, doesn't make sense. Now, when the art is not active, for example, it turns back into a white wall. And actually, in this specific house, there's a pool outside. And when the wall is not active, then sunlight reflects off the pool onto the wall and creates kind of a natural sundial. So it, it, it's, it's a kind of different experience. So you can't really say technology X is better or technology Y is better. It depends on how are you integrating it into the home. But most importantly, it also depends on what is the artist looking to create. Uh, like one of the things that, that, that we did a little while ago was use direct view LED to create a small triptych of, of three square square canvases. Rob probably remembers uh, was the artist was Ronan Sharabani. Uh, I believe that did that, and so you can really play with that because you you could you could have, um, for example, a a person moving from one part of the triptych into the other part. Uh, so there's so many different things that you can create that that relate not just to the technology but really to the to the vision of the artist. Um, and like Rob was saying before, you know, moving art is is. It's a different medium, you know. Some of these works, uh, like um, w one of my favorite artists in, in general, is, is Refik Anadol, and I would have not uh, gotten to know Refik's work if it hadn't been for her association with with Neo. But some of his works are are mesmerizing. You know, it's the kind of thing that uh, you can stand in front, you you can watch it, and it just has such an impact. Uh, and it's a completely different impact on a static piece uh, work of art 
which doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just different and it has a different impact on you. And to me, that's what art is, right? The art is about the impact it has on you as a person, the way it makes you feel. And that's completely different and, and, and completely personal for every single person on the planet. And Rob, do you do you see the same thing happening where the digital artists are educating themselves on the technologies available before they create certain pieces to help bring that piece more to life in the home, or is that still like uh, something that's developing? And we need we need more more education in the artistic community. Everything I think everything in the world of art, given so many people um, do not have a relationship with art, you know, education is key. Um, I think that you have a broad range of artists. You know, if you look traditionally at the fine art world artists, um, some of those, you know, the more established ones, a lot of them work cross medium. They paint and they sculpt, and some of them will do photograph, photography, and will, and will do video art. And but they won't, they don't yet, you know, deal with the kind of most more progressive formats. You have the emerging artists um, who are almost kind of born digital. They're natively digital. They're the iPad generation. And some some of the ones that you know that, that Tim has already referred to, they really push the frontiers. I mean, these guys are technologists. Um, and and what's very interesting is that you know there's a there's a conversation nowadays about you know who is an artist. It used to be that you had to go through the traditional art world, uh, or the or rather that you know the fine art schools, um, and then be picked up by a gallery. Um, what we're actually what we're seeing now is is an interesting conversation. There's a boundary the, the boundaries are getting gray there. If you look at the, the community of animated game developers, you know they see themselves as artists. A lot of these guys have actually been you know actually came originally from from art school, and then they went into that direction. And it's often said that you know video games video game developers are the best there is in bringing emotion out through the screen. Um, and a lot of these people actually they'll go to work during the day in the uh, in the video gaming studios and then you know their passion and their pride is to actually create create their art so 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 really it is a hybrid it needs education what's very interesting is in particular since the beginning of this year is some of the most established well-known traditional artists are now looking at the digital space um, in fact and and you know very often a lot of the a lot of the big artists like the really big artists you know they're not sitting there creating everything by themselves they have a studio of people and a team of people who are doing the work for them and if they want to have help in visualizing or, or helping someone realize their vision then they'll bring the people with the appropriate skill sets others will will try and develop um, by themselves we you know we have at Neo actually internally now um, you know a, a, actually a studio of of, of over twenty um, you know cutting edge kind of technology designers and, and artists who work now with some of the biggest artists in the world who are now looking to go into the digital space. So they come with their artistic vision and then, you know, we help them realize that. So it really is a mix, but education is absolutely key. And certainly, you know, if, if I look at, if I look at uh, um, Barco in particular, you know, they've been very progressive in terms of that desire to educate the community, you know, and it's taken some time. Um, but I don't really feel that most of the artists, even the more progressive ones, really have a very strong sense of if we're talking specifically about display technology. Um, and and so, you know, education needs to extend from the technology capabilities, but also from the market capabilities. It all needs to come together. It has to be an ecosystem play. They have to understand um, from a legal standpoint, the standards that are coming to play in terms of what you buy when you buy a piece of digital art. The artists need to know about the technology options that exist. Um, there's uh, you know, a lot of commercial questions and technical questions. So it all needs to come together and education is critical. Absolutely. So let's, with that, let's transition into the Neo platform in a little bit more detail and let's get more educated on how it works. One thing that was really interesting to me is the platform is secure enough where you have a system that people can loan, subscribe, preview, right? How does that, how do you manage to do that while keeping the integrity of that person's collection. So, so let's look at it. Let's look at it from the perspective of the um, from the perspective of the um, um, the artist. You know, that's where we start. The artists or the galleries that specialize in this work, they're able to use the Neo platform as a set of dedicated professional tools, which start with them uploading the highest quality, uncompressed master artwork files. So up to over, you know, sometimes over a thousand gig per file. And so we give them the ability to ingest under their under their account an unlimited number of works. Um, they provide all the curatorial and the metadata for those works. Um, and 
they are responsible for self-publishing and defining the commercial rights for how they want each of those works to be accessible on the platform. Um, and what that does is enable us to give all of the artists access onto the platform, but it doesn't mean that when you go onto the discovery area, that they'll all be shown. You know, we have the ability to create the discovery area and we'll come onto that in a moment. So they can either privately manage their work and just store it on the platform or use Neo as an alternative to Google Drive and we transfer by you know, sharing it with other people. Or they can transact privately. So sometimes if you have an artist in a gallery and they already know their collector, they can use the Neo platform to transfer ownership or to loan an artwork, for example, and deal with all the commerce aspects of it. And it essentially goes from one account to the other. Um, on the cloud, you know, we store and digitally preserve those master files, but we have the ability to render out different display copy versions of different resolutions and frame rates. So that ultimately, when we finally get to the screen, we're able to match what artwork someone has access to in terms of what they've loaned, what they've bought, or what they've subscribed to. And we make sure that the display, the so our display uh, software player is able, which can be either external with an HDMI box, or it can actually be on a smart screen, um, a, a software app. It can read the capabilities of the screen and then and then and then actually make sure that it's it's giving it access either to a download or a streaming copy, which is optimized for that device. So the artists go up, they upload their work. So as we said, right now we have over fifteen thousand artworks on the platform, and then on the other side, the consumers will be able to go into a discovery area. They can first and foremost use Neo as a freemium offering. In fact, we're launching our subscription freemium offering in a, in a few months' time, three months' time. So you'll be able to use Neo for free, the combination of a mobile app, and then you know, unlimited screens that you pair your mobile app with, which means your mobile phone can then actually act as a discovery uh, discovery um, a suite, where you can actually discover curated collections of artworks with the curation and the education all there to make it easy for you to find work which is appropriate to you. As a free inscriber, you get access to these works, but they're limited resolution and they have watermarks. The moment you start subscribing, they unlock high quality works and you get access to a limited number of works on a monthly basis. And then you can go into catalogs of artworks which are only available to either loan the kind of video on demand loan for a month or to actually purchase. Um, everything is done through for, for, the, for the purchases and loans you know, using the blockchain technology. Um, we um, support now um, NFTs, which are essentially digital certificates. Um, which are then put onto the blockchain. I won't go too much into detail, but essentially it's a very holistic solution which enables um, easy access for people to experience the works um, according to different business models um, and then experience them in the highest possible quality with a Sonos type experience to be able to manage the playback over multiple screens to schedule that play that that work. Um, we when we first came into market in terms of monetizing. Um, we focused, we knew that the market wasn't ready so much for the consumers. So we put a big focus on what we refer to as showcase locations, commercial spaces, real estate uh, lobbies, uh, hospitality locations, in order to be able to really showcase to the broadest possible audience. So with a global supplier to, to the Hiltons and Marriott's and uh, cruise ships and some of the biggest real estate developers in the world. Um, and that enabled us and ensured that we had a platform which was robust enough to really be a 24-7 um, unattended solution, which meant that really it could replace a physical painting without anyone needing to be there to service it. And that foundation, in terms of robust technology, has been leveraged as we as we look now to take the consumer market. and And for us, um, you know, the consumer market in terms of the offering and the neo brand is something which will be hitting America very strongly in the final quarter of this year. Um, so, so right now we're gearing up for a very significant uh, uh, US launch. Fantastic. I, I think that's uh, what caught my attention from what you said is so it's not just about owning the piece of digital artwork. You're providing the ability for people to explore. Here's the different types of artwork that are available on the platform. Maybe you're mm -hmm. interested in this. Learn more about it. Once you get them engaged, then then the next level is, yes, I want to unlock this better experience. I want to you know, potentially invest in the Barco Neo solution, or I want, I want to see it just the curiosity keeps growing and growing and growing. And you're turning people from maybe more passive admirers of art to enthusiasts and connoisseurs. Absolutely. There is you know, education obviously is key. You want to give people an access point, which is, which is appropriate for them. You know, we have, um, we use intelligence to kind of understand your, your tastes and the type of person that you are, if you're a collector or if you're a novice, um, you know, if, if I'm a collector, a traditional 
uh, art world collector, it may be that the curated collections showed for me will be more abstract, more conceptual, deeper, you know, harder hitting artworks. Whereas for someone who is new to art, might be looking for something where the visual aesthetic is a little bit more important. Um, you know, and so so that so the nature the notion of, of, of high quality curation is is as important as the education. And then the technology just needs to make it seamless and and easy. Um, and, and exactly as you said, from a business model standpoint, we believe that with a freemium model as a starting point, um, you know, which can be almost shared you know, socially even, you know, you can send someone an artwork through app through WhatsApp and then one click and they're a Neo account member and they can then be casting it onto a screen if they haven't even installed an app. Um, in all of those, all of those details of minutia have been painstakingly thought out, you know, strategically and then implemented technically by a very talented team over a number of years. And, um, you know, at the same time, one also needs to build credibility with the art, with the, with the art, the supply side of the artists and the galleries who see us as the credible entity to underpin this market, as opposed to someone that just wants to come in like an elephant in a china shop and break the rules and, you know, just put a whole hogwash of artists next to each other uh, with no thought and, you know, not necessarily creating an artistic context. So all of these nuances needed to be brought together. And, and again, that's why it's so important that the people that we partner with um, are people that, um, that embrace that, uh, they understand that, and you know, and they support the you know the emergence of the market. But I think it's fair to say that what you're seeing right now, um, in terms of you know, if you use the financial model of an ESCO, this is a market which has been bubbling over the last few years, and and it's on a on a very high growth rate right now. Interesting. So, how do you see the next you know few years developing? Um, not just for Neo, but for Neo and Barco. And I'd like Tim to answer the the question second as well. Where do you see you know, additional synergies? How do you see things getting more well-known or more impactful in, in this space? So I think, you know, Tim mentioned it earlier, you know, Barco Residential focuses on a sector of the market, which is which is highly influential. Um, it's, you know, it's maybe a little bit more niche in terms of it being the higher echelon, but these are people that want the utmost quality, um, which means that, um, first of all, you know, we have from our side, we have both subscription models, which will be the $10 a month subscription model for the average homeowner, but we then have very premium ones for, you know, for around about $100 a month, which give you access to blue chip art, which is much more appropriate for the Barco's type of customers. And we're working on campaigns so the Barco customers will get access, you know, um, when, when we launch for a period of time for to those platforms. But not only that, it gives them access to blue chip catalogs, which either will be simply you know, high ticket items from high end artists, which will only be appropriate for a Barco type of audience. But also in the nature of this space, there are times when you do have artists creating works in a very unique format, which is not, as Tim said, it's not a 16 by nine format. In some cases, there's even, there's even a desire, you know, sometimes for people to have an artwork commissioned and created for them, for their home, you know, and the architect, it becomes a much more white clubs experience. The architect and the designer and the homeowner want to want an entire wall or an entire ceiling to be, you know, a particular size resolution or you know size, and from that they determine the resolution, and from that, you know, together we have access to, you know, the biggest community of premium artists that can be brought on to actually create custom commissioned works. And the finally, and I'll, and I'll draw reference to something that we're doing a showcase we're doing together at Harrods in London. You know, there are times when. Barco are creating some unique formats as kind of standard offerings, so to speak, for the purpose of this of this space. So taking an LED, which is almost almost kind of, I guess, as, it kind of is a portrait. It's not sixteen to nine. It's not sixteen to nine. It's it's a unique aspect ratio and resolution. But it's it's something which really could be kind of a dedicated art canvas for a very exclusive audience. And you know, and together we're already creating artworks for that particular aspect ratio. So. You know, as is as has always been the case in in many sectors, in particular art. You know, there are there there is um, unique, exclusive, you know, limited edition scarcity and and customized options for a very high net worth audience. But I think the fact that we have access together to those freemium solutions, you know, it's a very easy entrance point. You know, the fact that people can get access to a subscription model to start with, just so they get to sense what this is all about and. What's amazing is that we're going through a behavioral shift here. And what you see is that when someone has a black screen, which they've turned into an art canvas, whether that's their 55 or 65 inch you know, monitor at home, or whether it's their LED or cinema wall, once they've gone from 
that being a black screen until it's been used to watch Netflix play a game or watch a soccer a soccer match. And they actually realize that it's used in the background when it's not on as a TV, but they're in the home, it becomes an art canvas. The moment you then turn it off and you take that experience away from them, people feel that you've ripped something out of their soul. So the, the fact that together we've got the combination of options and we have, um, in terms of you know the combinations of art and the business models, and we've been able to kind of work together on the technical side, I think that we provide something of great interest to to a, to a very significant audience. It may be niche, but it's still you know two million people. I think Tim talks about it around the world. Um, so you know, if you ask me where we where we were where we'd be in the next few years, you know, for us, you know, we would like to think that that we're you know uh, a name associated with this medium, you know, quite outrightly that people will know Neo. And, you know, just like you have brands like Armani and then you have Armani jeans, you know, the ability for us to segregate for the high end and the low end, but certainly Neo will be a premium brand that you want to associate with. And, and the, the, the example I would give is if you think of brands like like Apple, Apple have done a fantastic job in, in, in having a product, a premium product, which certainly is, you know, is adapted and embraced by the higher end of the market, but also, you know, other other people you know who are not in the same category will still use those apple products you know in the in the same way so i think that um you know we we like to be in in, in millions of millions of locations in the next in the next few years but with a high with a high focus on that you know that luxury layer who are really going to have the opportunity to have the best canvases the best art and, and that's something we'd like to do and showcase together with Barco. that's a great answer i think just i want to jump in right there because it speaks to a challenge that as a custom integrator we have in our industry, it's really important that you and Barco don't dilute your brand because just because you're, you want to reach more people, um, when you see like a lot of streaming devices, right? An Apple TV, a Roku, the quality is so compromised that too often people don't experience what, um, a, a 4K disc looks like, or what a Kaleidoscape looks like, what it looks like on a, on a higher resolution, higher quality medium. So they are never given the opportunity unless they run into us somehow to experience that whole world that they're missing out on. Um, so by offering that in the beginning and by having thought that through, you're, you're preserving the quality of the brand of Neo and of the Barco digital artwork experience, but you're also allowing you know people who are getting into art and learning it to aspire to something better which we don't have a clear picture of in our industry right now yeah I, I, absolutely and, and never compromising on quality either the either the display quality but also the quality of the artwork you know the artwork on the neo platform is going to be very high quality it might be as i said that you know where the curatorial aspect and some of the business models are adapted in such a way that we were able to have something a little bit different from different audiences and certainly formats want to take that but on the whole you know the brand cannot be comp compromised you know neo is is, is almost a, a luxury lifestyle brand um and and it's going to be very important that's why you know i don't think that we'd, we're eyeing to reach 260 million subscribers like like a netflix um but you know if we take 10 percent of those of people who are culturally aware you know who appreciate design and fashion and architecture and art um you know, there is a significant audience there which should be incorporated with our focus. Absolutely. And Tim, where do you see the the Neo Barco project heading in the next few years or what would you like to see added that isn't here right now? Well, I, I think it's it's not so much that something needs to be added that isn't here right now. I mean, I've, I've seen the evolution of the Neo platform over the past couple of years and I think it's a, it's a really robust platform. Uh, the security aspect is important. You know, the thing that attracted us about Neo is, as, as Rob mentioned before, is you know they're they're really hooked into the art market, right? It's it's really an understanding of the ecosystem. It, it's not, hey, we have some technology, let's see if we can make some money with this. Uh, you know, it, it really goes all the way to the highest possible quality, but it, it also goes, as Rob says, it goes to areas where where we, for example, don't don't play that much anymore, uh, which is absolutely fine, because that has also always been part of the art history, right? If you look at it, uh, even in the Middle Ages or, or everywhere else, that where people inspired was, you know, the, the great art collectors, people that even built their homes to house art, 
they inspired. They were the, the mecenas of the of, of the art world. They were the ones that that helped uh, create a vibrancy that you know helped give artists a living. And then that became more available to the broader public as well, because you know art is a public good uh, in in a certain way as well. So, from my perspective, the, the thing that that we really need now is awareness, right? People need to be more aware of of how the new platform works. For example, people need to see what's possible. If you look at, at the home behind me, uh, it, it was really interesting for me to see how all the people that visited the home because this was a home that was open to the public for uh, well for about two or three weeks before it got shut down because of covid but it was open to the public it attracted a lot of people from the architecture and design community but it also attracted a, a lot of people from the general public uh, because when they opened it up it was to the benefit of the of the atlanta symphony orchestra so a lot of people came through the home and it was amazing to see the impact just people walking in and being gripped by what they saw you know, not even being prepared for this, right? Not being said, hey, you're coming to look at digital art or hey, we make some technology, come have a look at it. These were people that were walking in with no expectations, not coming to see this. Uh, and the impact of it was amazing. Uh, you know, even even the reaction of, of uh, the person that was then selling the house after it was put on the market, who was a, you know, a luxury real estate agent, basically afterwards said to me, you know, any home as of a certain level of home should have this you know this is this is a no-brainer if people can only get exposed to this there's, there's no reason why they wouldn't want to have these kinds of um experiences in their home uh so to me that's the main thing it, it's exposure right it's being able to to do projects together it's being able to inspire other people with these projects uh that that is really what what is going to make the the biggest difference i think and as in as in many things the first ones are the hardest ones right because you need someone that's willing to take a jump even if they don't know everything right even if they're not sure of how it all works or, or what the impact is going to be um but i i think things like nfts are are, are a good um are, are a good evolution as well because obviously one of the things that people were maybe worried about was well hey if I go to a gallery and I buy a painting for an amount of money, then the only thing I really need to be certain about is that it's authentic, you know, and I can have it authenticated, I can invest in this and I can have confidence that I'm making a good investment. Um, with digital art, people weren't quite sure, right? What happens if I have this in my home? You know, if, if someone comes into my home with a USB stick uh, and they manage to copy the work of art, do they now have it as well? And does that dilute my ownership of the work of art? So those things are, are getting progressively addressed. Uh, and of course, companies like Neo are, are the ones that are leading the charge there and are absolutely uh, critical in, in making that happen. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if we go back 500 years, we're the guys that are making the canvas, right? We're, we're not making the painting and, and we're not making the paint. Uh, and so I think as people get more familiar with how everything works, I think it's not it's not a it's not a lack of technical progress. I mean, if I look at the Neo platform, it's fantastic. It's just that people don't not enough people know how it works. Not enough people are aware of of, of how you get involved. And so that that for me is 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 the main thing now: education uh, and more than anything, inspiration. Great. I, I agree completely. So my, my last question as we wrap up here um, for Rob and for Tim, what, what have I missed in this conversation that you feel would be important to talk about for at least a few minutes? <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, so I think, I think you've covered, I think you've covered the, I think you've covered the main points. I think you're know, following on from what, what Tim said at the end, um, you know, both Barco residential, you know, from a business standpoint, and uh, challenge me if I'm if I'm if I'm accurate here or if I'm wrong here, Tim. You know, Neo Neo is a was a was a relatively early stage startup in a market which was still finding itself. And you know, as an early stage startup, you're you know you were even with 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 uh, you know millions of dollars of funding, you're still limited in what you can do. Barco Residential is part of this huge organization, but still a, a relatively small group within the big picture. And and part of you know if you talk about educating and awareness, then there's two things you need to have. If you're if you're involved, if you're if, if the responsibility falls on your shoulders to, I sent I guess um, create a market. 
it's very hard and it's very slow. Okay, where we've been very fortunate is that the NFT hype and bubble, which is an offset of the of the of the, of the crypto world, um, whatever the reasons, this has legitimized the concept of people being able to own and trade a digital collectible, and the primary focus there is is, is art. And such has been the momentum and the hype um, that on the one side, you know, the customers are asking questions. Fortunately, from our side, you know, investors were asking questions. So we're going to announce a very significant funding funding round. But what that does is, and you know, NFT was was the was the most searched word on Google, you know, some weeks ago. Um, now, from our perspective, you know, where we're excited is when we look, for example, at the U.S. market for the first time, we'll be able to come out come out at a time when the market is is hot. You know, a lot of the education in terms of kind of you know high level high level kind of reference to this in, 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 in all of the publications that people read from the from the broadsheets to the folks of magazines. And you know, we're very fortunate now we have millions of dollars and some of the best branding and advertising people in America who are who are now behind this this machine. Um, and so I think um, what I think the last thing that I would say is that um, in any business you need to have a clear purpose and you need to have a clear vision. You know, and what for us has been exciting working with with the guys at barco is that you know from the beginning of from the, from the early days of when there was a clear vision and we were focused on getting there you need to be resilient and keep going um and and i think that i think that this is the time now where as i said earlier whether you call it karmatic karma or whether you just call it the, the evolution that we all knew was happening and it's just taken off um i think that the conversation here we can recall this and put a date in our diary for this time next year i think what you're going to see over the next 12 months where the hype is going to subside, but what's going to be left with is, is a, probably a few players, is always the case when there's a good market, coming out and, and suddenly being able to promote and campaign in a, in a totally different level to how it's ever been done before. And the fact that we've had time to prepare it, to, you know, to, to shape the story, to work on the technology, to have people who buy into this already, to have the influencers, the pioneers, the early adopters, you know, it's just about now, you know, executing this out you know, and, and, in, and enjoying the ride and enjoying the momentum because we're moving to critical mass. And so, you know, I'm just excited. and just want to, you know, thank, thank Tim um, for, you know, for his support and the, and the partnership, uh, you know, along the way. And uh, you know, I think that collaboration in any industry now is, is, is key to success. And, you know, we look forward to continuing ours together with uh, uh, Tim and, and the guys at Barco. And from, from my perspective also, I mean, the, the thing that's the most important is really is the shared vision, right? And I, I felt that, that we've had that shared vision since we first met. And of course, along the way, you know how you how you uh, execute on it may change a little bit, but as long as you have that shared vision, that that's really the thing. And I also feel like Rob says that now is the time, you know, a lot of the things that have happened over the past 12 months, uh, not only the fact that you have NFTs now, but also the fact that people look differently at life uh with everything that's happened over the past 12 months so i would say my maybe the final thing that i would say is if you're an integrator now is really the time to get involved right i i fully agree with rob that the things that we have been working towards over the past couple of years now is the time when, when a lot of those things are going to start to happen so as an integrator that has this kind of audience you need to get involved now uh, but i would also say to, to to the architects and designers Familiar, familiarize yourself with what we're talking about here because it has so many opportunities also from a, from a design perspective. And whenever we've done things like you see behind me and some of the earlier images that you saw, uh, you know, for an architect and a designer, it's, it's not only very exciting, but it's also something where, you know, it, it makes a difference to, to your work. It makes a difference to what you can create. And, and you want to be part of the vanguard there, right? You want to be part of, you don't want to be a follower, you, especially in architecture and design. You want to be a leader. So I would say now, now is the time to to get involved, familiarize, familiarize yourself, and obviously, myself and and, and Rob, I'm, I'm sure would be more than happy to to help educate people and, and point them in the right direction. But I'm I'm very excited. I I I, I believe like Rob, you know, a, a lot of the things that we've been working towards over the past couple of years, I, I think a lot of progress is going to be made in the next twelve months. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for being here and thank for this you. excellent conversation. I look forward to uh, having some exciting future projects with you and helping to spread the word. Fantastic. Thank Thanks, guys. Much.
Be well. Be well. Bye bye. You, 